ahead and bring on um, Elite Pro 8, Marilee Mersich, who's going to give us some insight on how we can really utilize social media and how to do it the right way. So I know um, Jenny Crane was actually able to do, you know, kind of a part one um, last week, and this is part two. So we're really excited to see how you guys are going to be able to build on top of that and uh, get some of these exciting um, tips from you on how we can do social media the right way and really just explode this business as much as possible. Well, it is an honor to be here. Thank you so much, Skylar. I, can you hear me okay? Can you see my screen? Yes, yeah. it's working great. Fabulous. It's an honor to be here, guys. Can I just tell you that? Oh my goodness. And oh, I, I feel like I just wanna sign up all over again. That was fire, Gary, Stern, and Nancy. Oh my goodness. Guys, understanding what we have our hands on here. Every, every day I'm aware of that. And it's just an honor to be part of this. So we are gonna be this part two of that social media conversation that Jenny Crane did a beautiful job of sharing last week. So we're gonna continue that. And we're gonna talk about building your social media brand and finding your avatar. So before we get started on that, let me just tell you a little bit about myself if you're not familiar with who I am. I am Marilee Marosic, as Skylar shared, Elite Pro 8. And, and we, my husband and I, live in the beautiful Pacific Northwest in Washington State. And uh, it, we actually are getting ready to celebrate our 29th wedding anniversary, which I can hardly believe. But, you know, everybody has a story. Everybody has a journey. And ours, when we started Married Life Out, we had this amazing career um, with my husband as a commercial fisherman in the Bering Sea of Alaska. So if you've ever seen the television series, Deadliest Catch, you have a visual of what he did. That was an amazing career um, for us as we started life out financially, especially, but it was high risk for high pay. And then I got a call one night, Sean had an overnight career ending injury and our world changed immediately. So what we felt was a great career choice and money was coming in, it was wonderful. But when everything changes, you really stop and think. And so at that moment in time, we realized that um, we've got to make a shift. Well, he spent over a year in physical therapy trying to get his health back. We tried to just, you know, get our footing and figure out what we wanted to do in life. We tried working for other people and we knew we were too entrepreneurial for that. So we ventured out and thought, okay, now we've got the answer. We're going to start our own traditional business. We want to be in control of that. Well, we realized quickly that now we had created kind of a monster. Um, it was a blessing, don't get me wrong, but we realized we had no time freedom. Absolutely not. In fact, we were working at the time um, in, that, in those early, early days, we were working about 100 hours a week, each of us, just to make our business fly. So having no kids, we just kind of dove into our, our world and that, that just consumed us. And it was at that time, so I want you to take note, at that time of our very busiest moment in life, someone saw something in me. Someone saw a hard worker, owns her own business, um, you know, really wants something more in life. And she kept coming around trying to introduce me to the concept of leveraging yourself, leveraging your ability to build an income and introduce me to the world of network marketing. And I'll tell you, it was the best thing ever. I told her no at first, because I didn't think that I could fit it in. But the best thing happened to me ever. She introduced me to the concept of it. I saw the income disclosures. I saw the possibility. And I told her no. But then she went out and started to recruit some of my friends. Best thing that ever happened to me. I immediately found a way to start doing this. I immediately found the time. I immediately found those nooks and crannies that I could make this work because I said, oh, heck no, I can do this. So I started out in the industry and I learned a lot along the way that brought me to this point four and a half years ago when I joined Life Vantage and I found my home. And I really now realize the importance of finding that right company. And guys, that's what you have your hands on. And it has been an absolute dream since we've been here. And now we have that ability to travel and do those things that we've really wanted to do and build that asset long term. So I'm thrilled to be here and just really share this with you because part of our success really has been building on social media. In fact, I can attribute about 95% of our growth 
to the benefits of social media. So let's talk about that. Building your social media brand. So we wanna talk about branding you, not branding the company, branding you. This is what's gonna give you a powerful message. I mainly use the Facebook platform. So we're gonna talk about that today and I'm gonna give you some examples. So I want you to envision your dream business and your brand. Who are you? What are you about? I want you to get clear on who you are and the message you give. I want you to get clear on who you want to be on your team. What does your team look like? Can you envision that, your future team? What does that look like? How big can you grow that? And I want you to know your vibe attracts your tribe. So we're gonna get clear on your vibe and we're gonna get clear on your tribe. We're gonna mar marry those two. But I want you to know this about social media, that you build relationships through social media by turning strangers into friends and friends into family. And that's the magic in it. So I want you to know this, that social media is simply the story that you tell through the content you create. It's a big playing playground, social media is. We know that Facebook has way over now, especially right now, over two and a half billion users, but there's also Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. It's a large playground. But social media is just a tool. It's not bibbity bobbity boo In fact, the magic in social media is when you create a plan. So we wanna help you develop your brand, identify your audience, that's your avatar, we're gonna get clear on that, and create your content and know your strategy. So before we do that, I wanna ask you, does your Facebook have an identity crisis? If so, it might be time to give it a little bit of a facelift. And I want you to remember always that first impressions are everything. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. So we're gonna talk about branding yourself and we're gonna start from the beginning. So I wanna ask you, what does your profile say about you? This is an example of my profile. I wanna give you some visuals so that you can picture what yours might be. So you, we wanna talk about even that cover photo. So I want you to audit your own timeline. I want you to go to your profile after we do this today and audit your own profile. And I want you to think about your, your cover photo. And I want, actually want you to think about it in this way, that most users, in fact, 90% of users, when they're on Facebook, you're probably doing it as well, you're on your phone. So remember that even your cover photo, make sure that when you, if you set it up on your computer, that you take a look at what it looks like on your cell phone. That makes a difference in how that cover photo is gonna show. You don't wanna cut, you know, chop heads off of people if they're in that background piece of it. But my cover photo says believe. That's who I'm about. I believe in people. I believe in their dreams and their possibilities. I'm just a believer. I absolutely am. But I want you to choose a good profile photo of you. It doesn't have to be a professional photo. This is just a selfie actually of me. But I want you to remember your smile is your business card. And notice I don't have a family photo. I, it's not a picture of my dog but people wanna see you. And we only have a small little window to do that in in that profile picture, so pick a great photo. And then does your intro summarize your brand? This really kind of defines who I am in a nutshell. Know that people are taking a look at you in an instant. They need to get an idea of who you are if they're just checking you out. And notice that I don't say I'm a Life Vantage distributor on here. I want people to be curious enough about what it is that I do. I want them to connect. So what makes you special? What makes you stand out? You want to stand out. So think about this. How many people are trying to sell something online? Like we're flooded with people selling this, selling that, but we want you to stand out. We want you to become that person that people look at this as an individual. So how can you add value and how can you be an expert? I want you to think about those things. What are those things about you that you can add value to your audience and be an expert in? How can you build trust? And I want you to be authentic. Don't compare your brand to others. Your brand is as unique as your fingerprint. So we say this, you do you. It's your, it's your brand, so get specific on that and be you, most important thing. People love authenticity. And I want you to think about this. People in general get addicted to reality television, for example. That's because they just want that inside look on someone's life. That's why social media works when you do it well. So I want you to think about who 
are you? So giving myself as an example, if I'm jotting things down, uh, I'm writing, writing and making a list. So I'm going to show you an example of my own list, but I want you to think of you. I want you to think of what this might look like for you. So write the top five or 10 things that make you you. We want you to define that. But what are you passionate about? What attracts people to you? What do you want to be known for? Here's an example of some of those things as you get to see me on my timeline you're gonna see me posting about these kinds of things. These are the things that are important to me. So as I was making my list and jotting them down, faith, family, healthy lifestyle, mentor, inspiration, travel, fun loving, photography, lap, lap, laptop lifestyle, that's what I'm all about. But now that you kind of get an idea of getting clear on who you are, I want you to identify your audience. This is kind of where the magic conversation happens. Identify your target audience and attract like-minded people into your world and business. That's your avatar. So finding your avatar, the avatar, who is the avatar? People ask you, what is the avatar? The avatar is the persona or embodiment of the ideal person that you want to do business with. Okay. So I want you to get specific with who they are. In fact, I want you to picture them. I want you to I mean, you can look through, flip through magazines. You can do all kinds of things just to get a picture of them. Actually, I gave this training in Cancun after I got off the stage. I had people asking me, could you send me your little bit emoji? I want to have somebody like you as a visual. So think of people that you want to do business with. So get specific on who they are. Give your avatar a name. Get familiar with them that, that well, but write down their top five to 10 ideal attributes. And I want you to get specific. So just a few ideas. Really think about this. Get clear. What's their age, their gender? Where do they live? Are they married? Are they single? Do they have children? Do they have pets? Do they have a job? What's their income? Do they like to travel? Are there, what are their hobbies? What are the clubs or groups that they're a part of? What are their favorite foods? Where do they shop? Are they health-minded? Are they athletic? Those are all things you want to get clear on. What do they look like? Who are they? So, as an example, this is who I'm looking for. I definitely am looking for business-minded people, are into fitness, maybe loves travel, positive, loves people, healthy lifestyle, loves animals. I love animals. Doesn't that make sense? And a sense of humor. I want to have the lighthearted, fun-loving person in my world and my business, right? My vibe attracts my tribe. And that's what we're looking for. So here's an example of an avatar that I actually have in my business. This is Renee. Hi, Renee. But I, I want you to identify what concerns your avatar. So as a visual, identifying what concerns my avatar, what might their pain point be? So now that we've identified them and you're thinking about things that you're posting and you're familiar now with your audience and who you're targeting, what are the topics that they might be searching for at night? Maybe better sleep, more energy, additional income, more time. Can you see how identifying with my avatar and their pain points by me posting things that might identify with them, they, we might have a connection. I'm going to be a standout to that person. But what kinds of groups would I find my avatar in? The beautiful thing about Facebook is there's tons of groups. You can, I mean, it's limitless on the amount of groups that you can be a part of, but what kind of groups would I find the kind of avatar that I'm looking for? Maybe healthy lifestyle groups, maybe healthy recipes, maybe it's a vegan group, I don't know, um, you know, fitness groups, anything that has to do with fitness, think of the sky's the limit, maybe, maybe they're into tennis, maybe they're into, you know, the gym or whatever it is, maybe it's a running group, where am I going to find somebody that's into fitness, think sky's the limit on this guys, just think, 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 but dog groups, I'll tell you I have people in my business because I'm in dog groups. And people definitely using the products because of it. So you find those people. So my avatar, Renee, is absolutely in all of these. But you want to build your relationships outside of the group. So what you don't want to do in a Facebook group is to go in there and start spamming your link or selling things. You're in there making connections. You're in there giving value to the group so you stand out. And then once you've audited your profile and you really are starting to jive with and post things that might relate to your avatar, when they go to your timeline and they start to scroll things and they start to connect with you, maybe you reach out to them 
you ask for friend requests, you start having conversations, you build those relationships outside of the group and that's where the magic happens. And you wanna create your content. So I want you to think about this. So now that your avatar is kind of checking things out, so will my avatar be interested in what I'm posting? Why would they do business with me? Think about that every time you post something, think about those things. What keeps them coming back to my timeline? Are you positive? Is it something that they can relate to? Is my content an answer to my avatar's problems? Quality content is absolutely key. But in doing that, I want to identify your five pillars. Jenny talked last week a little bit about the five pillars. The five pillars really are what best describes you. If you had five things and you really shook it down, what are the five main things that are the pillars that you can post about, the pillars that define you? So just to think about that, what best describes you? If I asked you what best describes you, what would you say? What are you passionate about? What are your core values? What do you enjoy doing? What is your happy place? Think about those things. So to give you an example, your pillars are unique to you. These are my unique pillars. I've kind of thought about it and defined it. So the main five things that I'm posting about, my main five pillars, family and friends, inspirational things, hobbies, laptop lifestyle, business and products. So you want to know your strategy and the best way to really get kind of a schedule of how you're posting things. Structure content using your five pillars equals efficiency. So using my own examples, family and friends, I have several different ideas on what I might be posting. Family pictures, Great Danes, my Wiley, boy, he's got a fan club all by himself. But friendships, humor, what defines family friends for me? Inspirational things. Maybe that's where I'm pulling things out about my faith, mindset, mentoring, health and fitness, hobbies, hiking, photography. I love photography. We live on an island. Island life is kind of my jam. Flowers, love them. Laptop lifestyle, travel team, fun adventures, and then business and products. Of course, I'm going to be trying to draw people to me and I'm going to be talking about business tips. And this is where I'm talking about value. So when you're reading your personal growth books, throw quotes in there or tips that let people know you have a business or that you have the ability to lead them in a business. Show them those things, motivational things, that this is where you get that posture and let people know you're one to follow, right? But then product curiosity. So we're always going to be cycling through this on a schedule. So if I had five days of kind of mixing things up, this is what I'm going to be talking about. So just, at the bottom, you'll see kind of a guideline, one to two posts per day, 20% content from each pillar. Notice I'm not doing 80% business. I'm not a rolling advertisement. I want people to get on my timeline and know that they can know, like, and trust me. That's where the magic happens. So don't overload one pillar. But you actually, it's really beneficial if you can go on and do one live a week. That are, there is no better way to get eyes on you than to do lives, giving value. And if you do a live, I suggest doing them no more than five minutes and literally just giving value, giving people a reason to follow you and love you and know you behind the scenes, right? But then rotate between images. So mix it up. Don't always do just photos. Don't always do just text, but mix it up. So images, text, but, and using those, I love the Facebook backgrounds that are colorful where you can do just a couple keywords, they really pop and catch people's eyes. But we talked about it, Facebook Lives and video posts are always great. Video is great to use on Facebook, but make this original content. Don't do it as shares, make it original content. You be the expert, you give the value. So just to give you some examples of how we post, I love this picture. I wanna show people humor and I wanna show that we travel. My husband does not, he never gets on an airplane without falling asleep within like the first five minutes. So. Of course, these kind of things grab attention, but I love giving inspiration. You saw Believe is my, my cover photo. Don't downgrade your dream to match your reality. Upgrade your belief to match your destiny. These kind of things give me a lot of likes and a lot of shares. I'm showing pictures of my dog. This is where people start to follow me. People can relate to me. People share all kinds of photos on my timeline because of dogs. I have people in my business because of my dog. 
And I love sharing what building a team is like. So for my avatar, maybe she's looking through my things. If I, if she's locked in a cubicle and alone at work and she's a hard worker, but maybe she wants more of a tribe life, you know, more of a team atmosphere. I'm showing pictures of that. Absolutely. I love photography. It's what I'm about. We live on an island. This is a sunset from our beach. And I'll tell you, it's almost a, a Facebook hack. Throw some sunsets up there. It's always a win. But again, showing more team time together and some of the wonderful rewards that we get as we build with a team. That family piece of it is very important. But when I'm throwing content out there about product, sirtuins, it's my new favorite word. Who else can say that? Absolutely. I'm sure it's many of your favorite, favorite new word, right? But it's curiosity. Notice I didn't put a bottle up there, didn't name the product, giving curiosity. And from that curiosity, tons of people reach out. What are sirtuins? I can take that conversation into Messenger and give them the tools I want to lead them to. It's powerful. But another one, just being clever, she blinded me with science, showing them what it does. But this is really me taking my five pillars and uh, literally legitimately going through in a week's time, this is what it looks like. So creating curiosity is key. We've talked about that a little bit, but you wanna get people asking, what do you do? You know, you're giving tons of value, you're showing content, you're having fun with your product, maybe pictures of, of a glass full of Axio, but it's really giving the curiosity piece so that I can tease the education, but take that conversation offline. You want people to ask the question, can you help me? Maybe you're giving health tips and you're becoming an authority so people can see that, hey, can you help me? But I wanna really encourage you, don't give the farm away. Always remember Google.com is out there. If you're just advertising products and people go to Google.com because you've blasted the name of products and you've not created that curiosity piece, they don't need you. There's no reason for them to ask you for more. That's really something to think about. But you wanna take the conversation offline. In fact, we know that the money is in the messenger. This is where the magic happens for me all the time. Multiple messengers open because people are curious about what it is that I do. They're inspired by it. So just a few tips before we close. Building relationships is what it's all about. It is making those connections and contacts. So some key things to think about. Be a fan back to those interacting with you. In fact, I love to use emotion when I do, not just a like, be a love, you know, give that love response or a ha ha or some kind of an emotion. But that response is actually an algorithm hack. Um, it really does help you to get more visibility. It's just this crazy little algorithm thing, but you have to give to get. So really interacting, commenting, drop messages to those people commenting or liking your post. Let them know that you appreciate their support that you love having them there or just dropping a message. Thanks so much for liking my stuff. How are things with you? Starting conversations, that's what we do. We are experts in starting conversations. This is how we do it. But add three new friends a day, you know, just as a general rule and non -life, not life vantage people. You wanna get other eyeballs on your, your timeline and not just fill it with life vantage, although we love our life vantage family, but you want to really continue to increase that world finding those avatars. But understand it takes time to build your brand. Quality connections are better than quantity. In fact, I'd rather see somebody with a thousand friends that has a really good connection or 500 friends with really good connections. They're interacting. They kind of know their peeps. They know their, their family, their tribe, but versus the person that has 5,000, but they really aren't connected to them. So really quality is much better than quantity. It's okay to have 5,000 friends. Some people do, and they're very good at working with them. So that works too. Just be conscious of that. But people plug into Facebook to be social, not to be sold to, right? Think of that. I'm going to say that one more time. People plug into Facebook to be social, not to be sold to. The reason why you don't want to look like a salesperson making those connections and giving value is the secret sauce. Social media gives you exposure and helps you build trust. It's still your job, however, to reach out to people one by one. A lot of times people get a misconception about social media and they think if they just get so good at building their brand and marketing themselves that they put really great content out and if I just throw great content out, people are gonna reach out to me like crazy and I'm gonna make all these sales 
No, you have to make a good effort to reach out and connect to those people that are finding you and connecting with you. You want to have those conversations one-on-one. -on -one. So always remember, this is just growing your audience and really stepping up and standing out. But as we close, the power of your brand, brand awareness is everything, guys. I want you to think about this. Brand awareness is everything. A strong brand, knowing who you are, gives you more visibility. It gives you more credibility. It gives you more, so much more. But originality wins. So be creative. Find your voice. Find your humor. Don't be a rip and repeat kind of person. Maybe find something that inspires you. If you see a post that's great, but change it up. That's another algorithm thing. By just copying and pasting or sharing doesn't increase your visibility. You want to be the expert. You want to be that creative person. So mix it up. Be original. Have fun with it. And I want to encourage you guys, this is a time for you to shine bright. Your brand is always on. We're in a time right now where there's a lot of controversial things and people posting things that can be polarizing to your audience. It's not the time to be polarizing. In fact, I don't think there's ever a time to be polarizing. Your, your job, if you do it well, is really to bring those people to you. Think about when people go to your timeline, do they know, like, and trust you? Or are you polarizing them by things that you're sharing? You don't wanna turn off half of your audience. Always remember that your brand is on. Think about it in everything you do, everything you say. But you never know who's watching, and I promise you, uh, people are always watching. But how, you, how do you represent yourself? How do you represent yourself Every, in everything you do, everywhere you go, especially on social media, but also everywhere, everywhere else you are? Think about that. How do you represent yourself? That's part of branding. We know that when we see famous athletes, we know that when we see movie stars, we see that, but that's part of what you're doing is you're developing your brand. So know that your brand is always on, but how do you represent our company? We know and love our company so much because we shine bright here and we want the world to know and see how special this tribe, our group, our family is. So shine bright, guys. There has never been a better time to rise. But how do you represent our industry? Think about that in everything that you're posting. Let people know this is so special. I'm telling you what, this having this industry in front of my life has changed my world significantly. And it's an amazing gift to have in our hands to show with the world. So let's shine brighter than we've ever done before. And I want you to remember this out of everything I've shared. The real secret is knowing who your target audience is and who you are. Sweet, awesome, Mary Lee. Thank you so very much. It's funny, I've been in this industry for about 10 years now, and I know people, um, obviously, with our corporate staff that have been in here for 